Well, there's a lot to do about meat today, and in particular about the health effects of meat. Now, very recently, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is the cancer agency of the WHO, they released a report on the relation between red meat and cancer. And this report, which is actually based on a very careful study of the scientific literature, it says that red meat probably causes cancer. So we're not fully sure yet, but it's probable. And you may wonder, what defines red meat? What does it cover? Well, it includes beef, veal, pork, lamb, but not poultry. So chicken is not included. The report also says that the evidence for processed meat and cancer is stronger. The report concluded that processed meat causes cancer. So they left out the probable. Now, what's processed meat? Processed meat includes meat that is cured, salted, or smoked. Now, the cancer that meat consumption is linked to is colon cancer, and to a lesser extent, prostate cancer and pancreatic cancer. Now, our group at Wageningen University has had an interest in the underlying mechanism. What is it in meat that potentially causes colon cancer? And the compound in meat that we have focused our attention on is heme. Red meat is rich in heme, whereas white meat contains much less. Then when you feed animals heme, which we normally do for two weeks, you cause damage to the wall of the large intestine, the colon. And in a very recent study, we found that the harmful effects of heme on the wall of the colon depends on the bacteria in the colon. You know, the colon is full of bacteria, and there's a lot of interest in trying to figure out what these bacteria are actually doing. And basically what we found is that heme is much less damaging in mice that received antibiotics. And the reason is that the antibiotics wipe out certain bacteria that normally destroy a mucus layer that protects the colon. So in the animals that received antibiotics, the heme wasn't able to get to the wall of the colon and do damage. Of course, this is in animals, and we would love to know whether the same is true in humans. And unfortunately, we cannot test that. Since heme is believed to be harmful, we would never get ethical approval because we're not allowed to do harm to our subjects. And that's a little bit unfortunate from a scientific point of view, but of course, fully understandable. So should people reduce their meat consumption? Now, from a health perspective, that's probably a good idea. And many national health recommendations already advise people to limit intake of processed meat and red meat. Now, personally, I don't eat any meat at all. I'm vegetarian. But I should say that it's not necessary to eliminate all meat in your diet. And that's what this new WHO report also says. It does not recommend people to all become vegetarians. Now, a topic that was raised on a discussion forum that I want to discuss it with you is iodine and salt. And the question was, OK, well, there, there is a strong push to reduce salt intake. But if people eat less salt, then that will inevitably also reduce their iodine intake. And isn't that a problem? And the answer is yes, that is a problem. And uh, health agencies are concerned about that. Uh, so they're trying to see what the impact is of a reduction in salt consumption on the provision of iodine and whether any measures need to be undertaken to increase the iodine concentration in iodized salt. As you know, uh, salt, as we consume it in, in bread, but also as you buy it in a package, is most often iodized because we need the iodine to prevent us from developing uh, iodine deficiency diseases such as goiter. So this is commonly done in many countries across the world uh, to provide us with plenty of iodine. OK, well, the other topic I wanted to address is uh, alkalinity of foods. And the question that was raised is, OK, citrus foods. Were, I, somebody told me that citrus foods, or, or lemon uh, particularly, is an alkaline food. Um, and he was wondering, what, what, what is this about? Um, now, the point is that, uh, of course, a lemon is very acidic. I mean, if you put a pH meter in the lemon, you'll see that the pH is very low. It's very acid, and you can taste it. It's very acid. What these people mean is that when this food is processed in the body, it generates alkaline compounds. So it has a so-called alkaline load on the body. And some people believe that this is very important, that, uh, that we eat too many foods that impose an acid load on the body, such as meat and high-protein diets, and that fruits and vegetables are beneficial because they will help balance the body uh, to help maintain the proper uh, pH, the proper acidity. Now, what is true is that our body is very efficient at dealing with increases 
or decreases in acid load. Uh, so uh, your body is perfectly capable of, of adjusting the pH of your body, of your blood, uh, to a constant level depending on your intake. Uh, having said that, it's true that uh, foods can impose a load uh, that is distinct from the acidity, uh, the actual pH, pH of the food itself. Uh, so uh, citrus food, which is very acidic, can have an uh, alkaline load on the body. So I hope that clarifies uh, this question that was raised. Um, we don't spend a whole lot of attention on this topic uh, in the, in the uh, uh, in the course, because there is not a whole lot of evidence uh, to support it, its importance. 